In this short video presentation, I will be exploring my area of research in relation to one of the seminal thinkers in education theory. I'll ground my understanding of how we learn in the writings of Lev Vygotsky and the socio-cultural school of thought. I will then look at how Vygotsky's notion of tool mediation has been expanded through activity theory by making explicit the social context in which tool appropriation takes place, the use of contradictions to expose tensions, and some examples from the literature. My understanding of how we learn is grounded in the socio-cultural theories of Lev Vygotsky. Vygotsky's primary contributions include his theories of mediation, the zone of proximal development, and the notion of physical and cultural tools. These theories can be useful when considering how humans learn concepts, such as those taught in university courses. Vygotsky's dialectical worldview stresses a need for dialogue in the social world, as that is where the functions of an individual appear first. This implies that the uniquely human meanings and understandings we hold for objects experienced in the world around us are mediated in the social realm and have been culturally and historically developed. Vygotsky was interested in the ways in which a learner makes progress rather than performance at a given moment. His statement, instruction is only useful when it moves ahead of development, implies a dynamic interaction between instruction and learning. Humans interact with the world through mediational mains such as tools and language, which shape the course of our action. Vygotsky proposed that external tools are used to manage the process of remembering and the advances of mankind coincide with the development of new devices and forms of mastering mental operations. The socio-cultural view of human learning is the conscious attempt to avoid seeing knowledge either as purely mental, the idealist rationalist tradition, or as physical and independent of human activities, the realist perspective. A socio-cultural view builds on the assumption that learning has to do with how people appropriate and master tools for thinking and acting that exist in a given culture or society. If we look at an educational episode which involves a student learning to read, Michael Cole provides a useful visual of the coordinated system of mediation involved as the student learns. The student talks to the adult, the child reads the text, and the adult shares their understanding of the text. Presumably, the adult also uses some sort of instructional strategy as they socialize with the student towards an understanding. A number of scholars have attempted to define those instructional strategies, which would help a learner along. Notable among those are the concept of scaffolding, offered by Levin Wenger, as well as the theory of assisted performance, put forth by Tharp and Gallimore. Say we move this educational episode online so that the child and adult are now in a separate location. If we are using modern information and communication technologies, the child and student may still speak with each other. The adult can use mediational means employing scaffolding and assisted performance strategies to mediate the reading of the text. However, a lot has changed here. The two humans are no longer sharing the same physical space. Physical cues and body language are lost. The basic rules and dynamics of conversation are different. The way in which they share the text is different either shared on screen or in two separate texts. Both are now subject to technical glitches and distractions are no longer shared. In effect, new mediational means are being used which potentially change the entire system of activity. From our previous example, we can see that introducing a new form of mediation, tool or technology into the process of learning can raise many questions. Activity theory, proposed by Ingestrom in 1987, provides a framework for describing a system of activity. Activity theory builds upon Vygotsky's principles of mediation, but frames the unit of analysis from the individual to the collective in socio-cultural context. Tools and symbols mediate between the individual, the subject, and their object, the purpose of the activity. The model proposes that the individual does not act in isolation, and thus the relationship between the individual and their community must be considered. The subject's relationship in the community is mediated by rules. Furthermore, the community's relationship to the object of activity is mediated by roles and the division of labor and power relations within the community. The object of activity represents the intention which motivates the activity system as a whole, in an educational setting likely the learning of scientific concepts. However, this does not remain static and may change based on how the activity evolves. I believe that activity theory is a significant framework for exploring the integration of new technologies in education. It suggests that changing the type of mediating tools used in an educational setting has broader implications for the activity as a whole. Activity theory also implies that activity systems are dynamic and the emergence of new mediational tools may be sources of innovation and change. 
By looking at the entire system of activity, one can consider whether new technologies meet the intended goals or intent of the collective. The model particularly becomes useful when examining two separate educational episodes which make use of different mediating tools. For instance, Murphy and Manzanares used the model to compare a physical and virtual classroom, capturing vari the primary variances in time and workload, visual cues, interaction and report building, and modes of communication in the two cases. The researchers found positive re results in both cases, while noting that the systems of activity differed greatly. Instructors responded by shifting their pedagogical practices to work with the new system of activity, taking into account the affordance of tools available, varying rules within the two contexts, change, changes in ways in which the community interacted, and how the division of labor was formed. When ex examining social activity through the lens of activity theory, contradictions can be identified as historically accumulating structural tensions within and between activity systems. Activity systems are not static and may be constantly changing through the adoption of new objects, being subjected to new rules, or using new technological tools. When these changes happen, there exists the potential for collision or contradictions within an existing established element of the activity system. Examples include how people divide labor amongst themselves or the implicit and explicit rules governing the activity. These contradictions can be useful to identify and understand how elemental changes lead to transformation. While contradictions potentially create a sense of unease for subjects within an activity system, they also have the potential to lead to innovative change and development. Briefly, we can look at two examples of contradictions in the area of educational technology implementations. DIPS study investigated the design of a blended education program. While the participants met face-to-face -face at intervals throughout the program, it also took advantage of online discussion boards with the presumed intent of opening up a space for the continued dialect to occur. The instructor did not actively moderate or contribute to the discussion, which led to an impact on both students' learning and the program as a whole. The discussion board may have allowed opportunities for moderated discussion, intervention, scaffolding, and corrective guidance by the instructor. However, with no dialogue from the instructor, the students felt abandoned. This example suggests that in the context of online discussion, the roles and responsibilities of both student and instructor need to be made explicitly clear. This might involve both parties jointly outlining them in advance of the course. In Hardman's analysis of the Department of Education's introduction of computers in a math classroom, she found that the introduction of the computer as a tool required a new division of labor, due in part to the novelty of the tool, but also the fact that the teacher was unable to assist all students with the computer tasks. Thus, students became teachers of other students. This contradiction suggests that the object of learning for the class might have shifted from learning mathematics to learning how to use the computer. Furthermore, the roles and responsibilities for assistance within the classroom shifted to the students helping each other. Activity theory offers a broad lens of inquiry that encompasses various aspects of the educational setting, such as students' and teachers' backgrounds and perspectives, the whole, institution, the whole institutional setting, and the evolution of the activity over time. In the context of educational technology, activity theory allows us to move away from the technocentric perspective, or from the computer as the focus of interest, to understanding technology as part of a larger scope of human activities. Activity theory attempts to build upon Vygotsky's research on the nature and development of human behavior, behavior by locating educational technologies as another tool for potentially mediating the interaction of humans with their environment. It may be a useful framework when investigating the application of technologies in an educational setting, which considers the broader social context. Activity theory may be helpful in identifying tensions with the use of technology in education thus providing areas for development and change.